People were shocked to hear that an emergency primary school had opened in North County Dublin almost exclusively for the children of immigrants. How could such blatant segregation be allowed to take place in our modern, prosperous Ireland, we thought? Well, a major new study of another part of Dublin, this time Dublin 15, due to be released next Friday, shows that this was no isolated happening, with overcrowding in our schools and a chronic lack of basic facilities or social planning. Many communities are in crisis and Irish and non-Irish families are being pitted against each other in a fight for pretty meagre resources. This study raises serious concerns for the future. RT's education correspondent, Emma Kelly, has the details. If this is allowed to go unchecked, where ghettoisation becomes the norm, I think we're building up huge social problems for ourselves in the very near future. We're in the minority now in our community and in our schools, as far as I can see. I refuse to, to believe that anybody founded the school with the idea of making it uh, discriminatory or um, segregational. But you can't build 3,000 houses in a greenfield site and have nothing there. Ten years ago, this whole area west of Dublin City was open countryside. Since then, it's experienced a population explosion unrivaled in Western Europe. The development boom is coming to an end now, but according to the authors of a comprehensive new study on this area, the task of building viable communities is proving far more troublesome. Enda McGorman is principal of Mary Mother of Hope Primary School. He's also one of the authors of this report. This is my 23rd welcoming ceremony since the school. Mary Mother Hope School it was established in 2001 as a little school on the very outskirts of Dublin uh, with three teachers and 55 children. Now, six years later, we have 700 children on staff. We have 20, 39 teachers. We have at least half of our enrolment will be newcomer students and just the whole profile of the school has changed, changed completely. The study grew out of a sense that as school principals, each one of us were speaking to each other about the difficulties our schools were facing, the lack of attention from the Department of Education, the lack of any policy development from the Department of Education and we came, I suppose, out of a, a sense of complete frustration and annoyance and indeed anger to the conclusion that the only way that we're going to get our story told and story heard is by commissioning a piece of research that will document the realities for schools, for school principals, for teachers and for parents in the Dublin 15 area. In Dublin 15, massive new estates have joined old established suburbs such as Blanchardstown and Castlenock. The population has exploded in recent years up by 27%. That's three times the national growth rate, and this has put huge pressure on schools already bursting at the seams. Over the past three years, enrolments up by almost a quarter. This study estimates an additional 850 children will be looking for school places next year. That's 31 additional classes. Over the next five years, it estimates 136 extra classes will be needed to meet demand. Inevitably, families are being squeezed. Rebecca got in to the school when she was four. She got in literally by the skin of her teeth. Coaches was four in March and he couldn't get in. So we'd be five and a half next year going to school. The main priority for anyone when I moved out, which is the main priority before I even had children, was where it's going to be the national school. And it's like literally there. I can see the school from my front door and I can't get my son into it. The one thing that parents would tell me time and time again, we took it for granted when we bought our house out here, there would be a place for our child. It is not too much to ask for. We've paid our stamp duty, we pay our taxes, we do everything that is asked of us, and yet when we want to put our child into school, there aren't enough places. But it's not just the population boom that's causing difficulties, its ethnic makeup is equally dramatic. Census figures show no less than a quarter of Dublin 15's population is ethnic minority. In some areas, the ratio's half in half. In the schools where pressure for places is intense, immigrant communities are really losing out. This report warns against segregation, but in one part of Dublin 15, Diswellstown, that's already happened. Every morning the bus comes here to pick up our children to the school by 8.15, it was. They have two buses, so 
and in the afternoon we come back here by 1.45 to pick up our children back home and we do this every morning. The school they attend is an emergency school set up when it became clear the local schools, Catholic schools, were full up. Their enrolment policies give preference to Catholics. I'm just applied uh, almost to six schools in, in this local area uh, and all the applications were rejected uh, from six schools. What did they say to you? They said to me, because we are Muslims, and here the priority is for Catholics in number one. The Irish people have, pro have proven that they are not racist and they, are not, they, they don't try to segregate anyone for no reason, especially not children. The only, the only reason for, 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 for this um, is the fact that there are so many foreign nationals. Unintentionally, they're creating segregation within the new communities. You know, if we, all, if we had the proper facilities in place and we had the proper uh, schools in place with sufficient capacity for everybody, we could have uh, a multicultural, you know, well-educated, multicultural, brilliant communities. And that can't happen fast enough, according to this study. It's found evidence of what it calls white flight in Dublin 15. It warns against a downward spiral of ghettoization. Of children leaving schools mid-cycle in recent years, almost half were indigenous Irish, half ethnic minority. But the children who replaced them were mostly the children of immigrants, just 21% the children of Irish parents. You bring this subject up and people think you're racist, like, you know what I mean? We're not racist, like, we're in the minority now in our community and in our schools, as far as I can see. There's classes over there in schools and a uh, majority foreign national children. Are you saying you just want them to come and work here? They shouldn't have children. They shouldn't do anything. Just come and contribute to our economy and don't take anything from the economy. I, I, I mean, that's unfair. Yeah, fighting a losing battle, like, you know what I mean? As far as the government is concerned, like, you know, it's just, you know, they have no interest now, like, you know. Dublin 15, yeah, it's overrun and it's uh, just too many houses, and but they're still building. On Friday, it emerged that the Department of Education has plans for an accelerated school building program to include Dublin 15. But this morning, the author of this study warned that without proper planning, more schools could mean more segregation, more situations like Diswellstown. We knew there were 325 children chasing 189 places in just two schools. If the third school had been planned, we would not have the situation arising that has arisen. Nobody wanted it. Nobody wants it to continue, but here we are determined to make the same mistakes again and none of us want that. You mean because these new schools aren't, as you see it, planned? They're not planned. We don't know where they will be located, when they will be opened, who will be the patrons, what will be their enrollment policy or how they will interface with existing schools and that to me is a recipe for disaster. And that report was from Emma O'Kelly.